Okay. So, again, I'm going to record the lesson so that we can send it to Nidale. Now, we saw, we saw this thing. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Uh, what is the mouse? What is the mouse? Okay. Okay. And so, this is day 13. Now, here are some, some of the examples. We have the, uh, some of the work functions we saw before. Aluminum is 4.3, carbon has 5.0, copper is 4.7. So you can see which ones are better to use. Uh, look at sodium, 2.7. And again, the solar panels, some of them are 1.6. Uh, some of them are 5.2, okay? So they're really, it's really difficult to remove the electron from them. Uh, now, we saw, remember we saw the energy of the electron. I, I'm gonna do this again. We saw that the energy of electron is equals to H times F. And so if you have enough energy uh, to remove the electron, remember this is phi or phi, the work function. Uh, this will just knock off the electron, okay? So now what happens if you have more energy then uh, you will, this will knock off the electron. So this is eject the electron or knock off electron. And then the rest of the energy will transfer uh, kinetic energy to the uh, electron. So transfer kinetic energy to electron. Okay. And, and uh, you, saw, you saw the simulation that I did here. Now, if I solve for uh, E sub K, so, so I subtract phi, yeah, I subtract phi from both sides. So phi cancels and you end up with this. And if I clean it up, it looks like this. I wanna linearize this because in physics we always linearize things. And uh, uh, the reason why when you linearize uh, uh, your data, you end up with a, with a really optimized uh, values. And so if this is my Y value and this is my M times X, and then uh, plus B, oh, take a look at this. The value on the Y axis is the kinetic energy of the electron. Look at this. The frequency of the light is gonna be the X value. Uh, and then what's H? The slope. the slope. So the slope represents the, uh, the slope represents Planck's constant. Oh, and typical question on the AP exam. And then uh, again, the X value or the value on the X axis represents the frequency of the light. What is B? The Y intercept. The y -intercept. And so what's represented by the Y intercept? The work, the work function. And so if I were to graph this, take a look at it. Yeah. So. I'm gonna take this, and that's that's today's topic, by the way. It's graph. It's really easy. I, I think it's it's really easy for the most part. And uh, I'm gonna lower it a little. And so now check it out. So we say that this is gonna be the kinetic energy of the function. So this is where you put the kinetic energy, and the x-axis is gonna be the frequency. And so, uh, and let me, let me draw this a little bit more. So if I use green, I'm just being a little picky. Okay, so I'm gonna extend the y axis. And so if I, if I graph my function, so I'm gonna use red for this. And so take a look at this. Oh, stand up again. Let's take a look at what the values are, the key values. Now look at this. You told me that, uh, let's see. You told me that this value is what you said? This is the work function. The Y intercept is represented by the work function. So this is V, it's negative, yeah? What was the slope? That would be the Planck's constant, there you go, yeah? Now here's- uh, Sorry, but why is work function negative? Isn't it the amount of energy that it takes to remove it? Yeah, to remove it. No, but it, when you do the math, yeah, 
when you when you you see we're looking the way you're looking at it is the the energy of light is this oh it's just but a if we yeah. rearrange it it becomes negative yeah and so it's just an easy way to represent this now let me ask you what does this value represent let's say it again which one oh <laughs> this point i thought oh. you would give me the answer oh. it's gonna be the uh like the amount of the, the frequency that will remove the son of a gun uh and this one has a name it's called the cutoff frequency this is the cut off frequency yeah this is the minimum frequency that will knock off the electron once it knocks it off the more energy you have on the light the more kinetic energy you give to the electron look at this you increase it and then it goes this way now take a look at this this is this is kind of difficult what happens if I get a frequency of light, say right here? Yeah, I'm gonna put it right here. Is that is that frequency gonna knock off the electron? No. Not at all. So all of this, uh, I'm gonna use blue and I'm gonna use a thick. Uh, all of these frequencies will not knock off the electrons. Yeah. So these ones do not have enough energy. Uh, so the photon. Uh, does not have enough energy does not have enough energy to knock off electron yeah and so okay does that make sense and, and so i don't know whether you find this difficult common question they ask you quite often you know what's the what's the representation of each value let's let's do that, take an example and then uh so we can practice all of this because i know you guys are anxious to try something new uh so a laser light beam and i'm gonna put these notes right now in your folder uh laser light beam emits photons with energy 5.3 electron volts the photons target a metal whose work function is 4.8 volts okay we're gonna graph the maximum kinetic energy. And look at this, this, this is all symbolic. And so let me, let me move this a little uh, out of the way so that I can work with, with that one. Uh, okay, give me 30 seconds. Let me just get this out of the way. Oh, Mr. Russo, you're high tech, Simone. <laughs> Okay, so let me move this out of the way. And then uh, let's graph let's graph all of this over here. Okay. It's the same thing with it. So I need to find uh, the cutoff frequency. So remember, uh, how do I find the cutoff frequency? Help me out. So you guys remember? This is the work function. You can set it equal to zero, right? Like in, equate it to the energy. It can, and you can do the energy equals times constant times frequency. The energy of the light, the photon, we use gamma to represent that. A lot of scientists don't like the gamma symbol, which is equal to H times F. This is the cut of frequency. And we set it equals to 4.8 electron volts. The, the, the Planck's constant is given in joules. So I need to change this to joules. So one electron volt is equals to how many joules? 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Get a life, compadre. <laughs> there is an Instagram. <laughs> no, no. And so now uh, to find that, well, let's see. So HF is equals to, uh, let me put that in my calculator. So you guys try it too, in case I make a mistake. That happens quite often. So let me see, 4.8 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. That gives me 7.68 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, yeah? That's the energy, that's a work function in joules. And the reason why we don't like joules because uh, the numbers are way too small. So I divide by H, and I divide by H with 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. That's Planck's constant. 
And uh, that would be joules seconds. And so notice that the joules cancel and you end up with Hertz. And so I'm gonna divide this by 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. And uh, that gives me 1.15. So 1.15, oh, six times 10 to the uh, 15, and that'll be Hertz. And so that'll be, uh, let me see. So I'm gonna take a 10 to the 14. So that would be 11.6 times 10 to the 14 Hertz. And so, and what I did is I put, I put the values. Did I get the wrong answer? No, no, okay. So I put the values here for the frequency of light, 7.1. So we're looking at ultraviolet light, okay? And so it's out of the range of those. I should put the ultraviolet light on my chart. I keep it as a reference so that I can go back. And so, so here's what happens, comadres. Yeah. And so this is the frequency and this is the maximum kinetic energy. So maximum kinetic energy. And so the frequency will be 11.6. So, and you know what? It doesn't matter where you, where you get that value. Uh, because it's all it's all uh, symbolic, and so this will be your cutoff frequency. Right here is eleven point six. Here is eleven point six times ten to the fourteen hertz. Does that make some sense? Yes. Yeah. And so. And this all comes from like, so we can find the the. The frequency required to uh, cut off frequency. The cut off, yeah. And that just comes from the linear equation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you move the word function over it. Yeah. And then you just divide by four. That's correct. Or, or if you want, you can also do this. You can uh, say, I want the energy. I want the energy to be zero. So these two are equal and you solve for that. Yeah. And so again, the only thing you have to change everything to joules. Uh, and so graph the maximum kinetic of the eject, show off the cutoff frequency. So here's a cutoff frequency. And then if I want to find a cutoff wavelength, they also call it threshold. Yeah, I think I show you that on it. They, they, they have several synonyms. Just remember threshold is like, you know, they could also call it critical value, but they don't call it critical value. So I think just in case you ever see this, Show the cutoff frequency, graph the maximum. So we graph the maximum kinetic energy. What is the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons emitted? Oh, so I am using uh, 5.3 electron volts, yeah? So look at this. Uh, and I wanna know the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons, so here it is. And so remember one thing, the maximum kinetic energy, yeah? is gonna be, it should have max in here. It's equals to the work function uh, plus, oh, not like that, not like that. It will be, uh, no, it is, no? Yeah, HF minus phi, so HF, so HF minus phi. And so I am looking for this maximum kinetic energy, yeah? So I know HF is what? Uh, this is the energy of the photon and it's given us 5.3. Those are the same problems we did before, but now we're looking at graphs only. And then minus the work function, which is 4.8. Oh. And so 5.3 minus 4.8, that gives you what? More or less, you'd have to be 0 0.5. And that will be electron volts. And so this is the maximum kinetic energy of the electron once it gets hit by that light source. Does that make sense? And so, uh, and, and you know, if I, if I find the frequency of that light, I can locate it over here and I can find the maximum kinetic energy. So if you will, you can say this is 0 0.5 electron volts. This one will be uh, zero electron volts. And so this will be the frequency of that light. I'm not gonna do it because they don't ask me for it, 
And so, but I could easily find it. Show the wine or step on your graph. Oh, shh. let's show the wine or step on the graph. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, and when they say show, we obviously want the value. So what is the value here? The y intercept is equals to? The work function. The work function. So C is equals to 4.8 uh, electron volts. And it will be negative, no? <laughs> so it, it will be on the negative side. So what, what happens is if they show you a graph, you know this is the, uh, you know, this is the, the work function, and you know this is the cutoff frequency. And so show the one step and you grab, determine the stopping voltage. And so what's the stopping voltage, Comadres? Okay, so the stopping voltage is the voltage required to stop the electron, okay? So the stopping voltage, we call it V0, is equals to the maximum kinetic energy. You're correct. And so, and so, oh, so the maximum kinetic energy for the electrons, so that would be uh, uh, Q times V, yeah? And so the voltage will be, how many volts is this? To stop an electron. Well, you need 0 0.5 electron volts. So how much voltage you need, you, do you need? It will be, uh, this actually will be V times Q. And so that would be uh, 4 0 0.5 electron volts, 0 0.5 electron volts. And so I need 0 0.5 volts. Can you see how trivial that is? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of dumb. Yeah. yeah. So how much voltage do you need to stop on the electron that has an energy of 0 0.5 electron volts? 4.5 volts, yeah. So they kind of give you the answer basically. So yes. You could, you could say that electron volts and volts, um, like they're, like you always have the same number, you know, like you have like 30 volts of each electron volt. Yeah, yeah. It's just, this is a unit of energy and this is a unit of electric potential. But yeah, it's the same value. Okay. That, does that make sense? So it's so trivial that it's confusing. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's weird that yeah. so like one volt is the charge of an electron. Yeah, that's... No, no. Uh, all the ones, Madeline is going to be, Madeline is going to be so confused. Okay. Uh, let me just show you, comrades. Now look at this aluminum. We chose we chose silicon. Uh, we chose silicon as our line over here, and so and uh, this is the work function. Now aluminum has a uh, lower uh, work function, so that's why we put it over here. It should have been closer over here. And then we have what was the other one? Uh, nickel. And nickel has a higher work function, so it's got a higher value. It's got a higher uh, cutoff frequency, and that's why we put him that way. So uh, let me stop this. So 